Hello, bonjour everybody. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for watching my video. Thank you for those who subscribe to my channel. Today we're going to look at the book Iron Cross. And inside the book, it's a mid-war version 4 for the German. Inside the book, there's two scenarios. They are city fighting. The reason why I take the time to talk about city fighting mid-war is because with the new book, Soviet Bagration, they already have the engineer, the cyber, the storm uh, troops of the Soviet, flamethrower, everything that make you think that maybe city fighting will come on the late war. Also, Battlefront decided to put on the market new city building and new decor for building your city fighting. So I have to assume or presume that Bagration German and Bagration Ally will bring on the table some city fighting scenario for late war version 4. So the best way to look at into it, and without really knowing what's going on, is to look at version 4 of uh, Battlefront and to see if there's some city fighting. And the enemy at the gate for the Soviet and Iron Cross present four different scenarios to do city fighting. So I took into Iron Cross one city fighting and I built a map. So let's see how I managed to build it. So to build the city fighting zone, we need to purchase some items and you don't want to spend too much money or you can go to Battlefront and buy everything over there. For me, I decided for, to go to a fabric store and at that fabric store I, saw, I found some vinyl. It's perfect for my map and on top of that I got it on sale. So the vinyl I pay like $5 a yard or a meter. So it's really cheap instead of the regular place price at $28, $32 because they call it end of the road. On top of that, I found it great so I don't have to paint to look like a city section. The size, how about a, enough to build an entire city 4x6 and also some left to build a 2x4 two times so I have 4x4 four four, and today we'll look at 2x4. So we need a piece of vinyl, really cheap to find. The second thing you need to to purchase is, or what I did use is chef liner, multi slip, like you can see here, they sell them 18 by 4 feet, so 45 cents might by 122 cents might, and I pay like $3.50 for that big roll right here. So it is enough to build the ground for my city fighting, and for that ground, <coughs> here's what I need. So with the shelf liner, I decided to make road and my base for my house and also some green area for the park, for example. So here for the road, I decided to cut it two inches wide or five sides mate, and the entire 18 or 45 cents mate long. And then for, that is more complicated because I have to think about that, if you decide to build the square where your house will sit or your building will sit in and you will fight inside that. I have to figure out the other command between four inches to six inches in diameter square. If you take a four inches diameter square and once you place the building wall inside and then you place the divider for the four room, you find yourself with about three and three quarter in size square for putting your troops in. And when we think that every platoon medium base is at least two inches wide, then you can put many troops in your square. So I decided to go just a bit bigger. And when I said a bit bigger, it's just to fit at least four platoon, four team of the platoon in each square. So I found myself with eight inches and three quarter or 22 centimeters wide square. That way when the building is installed, the separation for each room is installed, I can put at least four teams in each square. Now to paint them, because we try to stay at low cost as possible, I went from to my own hardware store and I find paint. We call it oops and I pay a dollar for each and that gave me the opportunity to purchase them 
sometimes you get the good color on it, sometimes it's not the right color and you pay the entire can, but for a dollar to four to five dollars if you buy the color exactly you're looking for, you get your paint for your for your city. So we need to recap my matte vinyl. I got my chef liner to do my road, my square to put my building on it. Some are cut to do grass, so if I decide to have a park, I can have my park. So that's the basic, and it helps you to build the entire map. So let's build it pretty quick and move on. So first you need to find on the four foot wide the center of your, and if you look at it, my four foot is about right here. So let's put it right on the seam here. And we're going to put the road. So I'm going to put one on the right in the middle like that. And they said on a building your city that the two main city where you're going to fight into it have to be at least four inches from the center. So I'm going to put my four inches to the from the center or 10 cents mate. About right here. And I'm going to put my building. So for that I'm going to put right here with the center and I'm going to do the same on the other side. And as you can see the gray edge is my sidewalk. I put it into the road not the distance with the building. So I got my two buildings we're going to fight into it. Now we need to calculate the center from the map here. And the center is about here, right there. Now, when you think about that, <coughs> that make no that make no sense that the road would be basically not in a proper way where there's a full intersection. So I want to have a full intersection for my road. So I'm going to just fall back to let the road pass in between. So right here. And pretty much at the end of each side. So now I have enough space to pass my road. As you can see, it's really not that thick, so really easy to lay on it. Just like that. So we're going to put that right in the center here. My four inches. And my four inches for my building. So you get an idea. And because the road is not that, liner is not that thick. I can just put them on top of each other's, just like that, and make my road. So really easy, not that difficult, and it doesn't impact too much on the look of the road or to move your troops. So I'm going to complete it and come back to that. Now that the ground of my battlefield is all installed, as you can see, it's really easy to cut also that uh, Shelf liner, so a pair of scissors or exacto knife, and you can make it the length that you need for it. So I decided to cut it to show you that it's all even, and it's all the same height for everywhere. Now for the building, you have the choice to purchase battlefront building. Also, if you have a 3D printer or you know someone with a 3D printer, you may ask him to print some for you. There's plenty of destroyed building that probably will fit what you're looking for to make your city building, destroyed city building made. Also, on YouTube, you can find some good people who create battlefield or tabletop uh, building and really cheap, really easy. I've tried to find one where they use that what you find at the dollar store, like those foam board that is about five mil thick, and you make a city building with it 
If I find the video, I can put it in the description below. And that show you really, really cheap how to make your CD building. For me, I have a 3D printer, so I print my own. So you got that model here with a big door. And I found also the counterpart without a with a wall instead. So I don't have to have four big door. I can have only two corner or only one corner with the door. The rest is wall. So I'm going to put them on the table and give you an idea how it looked like. I keep the camera static overhead like that just to complete it. When the city is fully built, I'm going to take the camera and make an overview of every zone in the battlefield. So the last thing you need to put inside the building is the separation for the four room. For that, I took a piece of wood and I put it as a square or a X, a bit like you can purchase directly from Battlefront, but I made it myself with some wood. So and you just slide it into fit in the middle. So now that square is eight inches long on each side, so you you know you get a bit more than four inches on each block. So you do one and you can put them in a full building like this one, or you can go in the half building or there's only a few walls into the square and put the same thing. But you have to understand that a full building or just partial building like this is considered destroyed so there's no room attached to that square. The only room that is attached to the square is this room and the other counterpart on the other side for the other team. Battlefront, when they talk, there's four walls. They also mean that they consider them complete. So they are f a full house and the tank cannot enter by those or you have to assume it's a wall with windows. The reason for that for Battlefront is it helps to move your troops inside and get a perfect view of what's going on. So that makes sense also to have the room with some opening so you can put your hand but you have to put in your mind that is a full house full built to the entire. If you decide to have it just few wall one two three maybe then you have to think that the, the building is destroyed and the troop may move freely inside the building and they use those wall that is still standing as a freestanding wall to protect from the other side but not from the inside of the building. As I mentioned earlier, if you put your square, 8 inches square or 20 centimeters, when it's time to put your wall in your separation, you don't get that 4 inches or 10 centimeters square to put your platoon or team member inside. And that makes it a bit difficult. So you find with your one or two team inside, one or two team outside, if there's a different level, then you can find those in different level. For that, you may play with it. But the front said between 4 and 8 inches or 6 inches. So between 10 centimeter and 15 centimeter for square of your battlefield. Or <clears throat> As Battlefront mentioned, their building is uh, mat, if we can see, is 8 inches square or 10 centimeters square. When you put your wall and your separation in the middle, that square doesn't become 4 inches and you get a problem because each platoon is 2 inches, or not platoon, but each base or medium base is 2 inches wide or 5 centimeters. So you cannot put too wide. So you find yourself with maybe three team in the square and the rest has to be outside the building or upper level. By playing a bit because they say between four and six inches or ten and fifteen centimeters to build it, I decide to go with a nine and three quarter. The reason for that is each building is about wall is about a quarter and my separation is a quarter inch too. So we make it a three quarter. So if I put that nine and eight and three quarter, I'm going to be able to fit my platoon inside the square. So let's see how it goes. So if I put 
one team, two team, three. So I can put at least six members of the platoon inside the building. If I have a, a platoon of five team members, then it would be easy because five and mean you have for the penny four team with the medium base, the common and the smaller base, and you are allowed to have one flamethrower. So you get the entire platoon, the small platoon inside your building. If you go in and install it with a second level, you can probably be doing the same, but you can take at least two teams on the upper level. If you put a third level, then you'll be able to put your command on top of it as well. And you get the entire platoon of seven, eight, nine, uh, team inside the same corner. So that's the idea. So you have to judge how big you want to be to have your square. But if you have only four inches, you would be able to put three team like this, and that would be about it. So really to consider when you built your area. So for my city, last thing I need to put is some rubble or destroy part of the wall that it's on the side of the road, the side of the building, so it looked like it's destroyed, but nobody pick up the stuff, so it's just hang there on the side of the road against the building. So you get two options. Uh, you can print your own rubble like this, or you can make your own. So if you decide to make, what I decide to do is to use high density styrofoam that for insulating wall. I cut them in small part, make it look like a pile, paint like a bit the color of the building and that make my rubble. So I'm going to install some around the battlefield and that will complete. So I just installed rubble. It's really important to install them and consider that they are more likely to block tank. So when you build it, you have to think that I don't want if tank is allowed on the scenario, they can roar everywhere. You want to like in a real city during the war, decide where the tank gonna go and make it with some killing zone. So that's the reason for why well, I decided to place my rubble this way. It's not that perfect. I may look at it in a different way, but it is what it is right now. I don't know what would be the quality of the view, but here's an idea. If you get the camera low at the troop level to see the area. So we just pass a city center, there's a destroyed building, and across the main road, there's one build, complete building. From the other side of the road, here's my city building, the main road, and we go across. So let's go across. So on this side, I decide to have a park. So there's some trees, field, block wall, and then the destroyed building. A complete building right here, that would be for my opponent, or me, depending how we roll it. Another building across the street, and we reach the center of the map. Let's try to make a flyover. I'm not sure about the quality of the view, but that gives you an idea. You have a two by four city map. You got one quarter here, the other quarter of the map. So it's four zone. The big city center main road, and one quarter on the other side with the city block. City downtown or city center. Most of the old town have a big city center where they put all kind of stuff in it, like 
Press in my city block. You get across the street, another building destroy, then the city center with the fountain in the middle. We're gonna cross over the main road. You get the city building with the destroy one city right beside. That's the end of the map. We're gonna come down, there's a park, and another city building destroy. That complete my video on city building. As you can see, it's a map about two by four feet. And inside that, I use Iron Cross scenario to have two buildings that each enemy have to fight for. So one side, you get the attacker, the other side, the defense, depending how you play your scenario, where you would be fighting from. And you saw the building of it. I know that you can go with Battlefront and purchase all the equipment, all the building, all the rubble, the base for your building, etc. over there on their website. You also have, if you have a 3D printer, print your own uh, city building wall. And if you don't, you can also find on the internet, on YouTube, some good video how to make city wall using 5 mil styrofoam board that you can find at the dollar store. I think here is a good mix of not too expensive, but really efficient and not that bad to look at. So that completes my video. On my next video, we will see all the steps about assault and the city fighting. So we're going to go with uh, my British and my German, and we're going to show all the steps to do to complete an assault on the city building. Also, fighting room by room, and what happened during counterattack and attack or assault in those rooms. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy. Feel free to leave comments in the description uh, in the comments below. In the description, I will provide you some link if you have a 3D printer and some link also if you want to make your own CD wall. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.